Hello and welcome to Bringing Education Home. I'm Herb. And I'm Christina. And together we bring you ideas that will help families grow and develop into happy, healthy, and successful families that are both inside and outside the box. If you like the show, be sure to follow Christina on Facebook. And please leave us a like and review on your favorite podcast platform. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Pat Patrice Porter. She is known as the Gardening Grandma. She is a master cultivator who nurtures the timeless art of gardening while sowing the seeds of survival skills in future generations. With her expertise, she not only teaches the art of growing fresh and nourishing foods, but also tends to the growth of resilient families as a dedicated parent support coach. She is the author of the book series, Bringing Out the Potential of Children, and the co-author of the number one best-selling book, No Problem Parenting, Raising Your Kiddos with More Confidence and Less Fear, and the number one international best-selling book, The Parenting Owner's Manual, The A to Z's of Raising a Happy, Healthy Family from 34 Experts from Around the World. Thank you so much, Patricia, for joining us. This sounds like a really interesting topic, and I'm really looking forward to talking with you today. I am very happy to be here. I love what you're doing. I love what you're bringing to the families and... Uh, I'm happy to share whatever I've I've got here to uh, help the grow strong and uh, thriving families. That is excellent. Yeah, Patrice and I have known each other for a while now because we're in the same um, networking area and group. We have a whole bunch of family-centered supporters who help families grow and develop. So she's like in gardening, we're in education, then we have a bunch of communication experts and nutrition experts, whole bunch of different people in our family circles community that helps families grow and develop just the way we're doing right now. And that parenting owner, uh, sorry, parenting guidebook that was in the bio is also part from that group. So thank you for being here. So we always like to start with why. What is your, where did this passion come from? Why do you want to get kids involved in gardening and families and all of the different stuff? Where did your passion come from? Well, it, it came from, I well, my passion for gardening. I've always had a garden of some sort. So, but <laughs> the, uh, with the kids, I had worked with, in, it was called the Play and Exploration Program as an educational associate. And it was in that position where I could see the potential in the kids and nurture it and watch them blossom. And that's what warms my heart. That what keeps me uh, working towards seeing like the kids growing to their greatest potential. It's, it's uh, they are our future. And it was interesting, like in that program, it, we would set out invitations for them uh, based on their interests, whatever interests they're showing. <clears throat> and then we would, or if we wanted to tweak their interests, We'd set out an invitation for them to explore, and then we would scaffold them to new levels. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was a way of opening new worlds to the kids, giving that exposure to new things and everything. And the one world that I loved opening to the kids was the world of gardening. Because to me, that's a natural fit. Kids and gardening, getting them connecting with nature, and the awe and wonder, and uh, and because I've been a, a very uh, passionate gardener, and and uh, uh, anything gardening, I, I just love. I study. I've studied with some of the best people around, and and uh, I want to bring that knowledge to the kids, and not only so that they can, you know, be growing that fresh nutritional food and giving them a life skill. But I found like there's so much more in the gardening that there's like life lessons. So like if you want to have your child to go on the trajectory of being independent and responsible, gardening is a wonderful way to do that. So it's, it's kind of combining that growth of our children, growing nutritious foods and growing wholesome kids. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there are, 
in my world, I, I do a lot of woo stuff and it's called the, the daily dozen. And one of the daily dozen is getting out into nature and getting your hands into the ground. And kids really, really adapt well to the human stuff. You know, they, they love the human stuff. They love moving their bodies. You know, we used to take my granddaughter around the neighborhood and we would find beneficial bugs for, for my little garden. And we would we would catch them and bring them back. Um, every year we would get like a thing of ladybugs, and the she loved the ladybugs. And and when it was time to release them, we would like put them in her hand, and they would like be crawling all over her. And then they would like disperse into the garden. And these moments of being in nature, of playing with the flowers, of playing with the bugs. I mean, she was so connected into that that it, it just made it really easy. So I can see why why your passion for gardening and children, because the joy that they find in the natural world that so many adults have lost along the way, they just have it naturally and it just sparks. So I can see why you do that. So what are some of the things and activities that you do with the kids to not only watch that sparkle in their eyes, but actually help them learn and grow? Uh, just one thing I wanted to add. So it's in like, if you garden with your kids, it can reignite that awe and wonder. So just a little hint to the parents and be a terrific bonding experience. But uh, like when I'm introducing the kids to gardening, I don't want it to be a chore for them. I want to engage and pique their interests, get them engaged with it. And so one of the first questions I ask, I say like, what type of garden would you like to have? And I'll give a few examples, but it's really, I want them to use their imagination and creativity and come up with a place where they would like to be spending time in. And I, I've got a real funny story. I, I asked this question to my uh, uh, grandniece and I said like her her mom wanted me to teach them how to garden and so I asked her what type of garden would you like to have and she said she wanted a Halloween garden <laughs> and I thought well okay there's the lumina pumpkins which are white skinned uh -huh. they look just like ghosts in the pumpkin patch so I said you could have ghost pumpkins and then she said well I want sweets and so I thought, and 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 uh, the stevia plant. I had a stevia plant, which is ten times sweeter than stevia than sugar. So I I made a cutting of that for her garden, and then she said she wanted a black cat, and I happened to have a black cat silhouette, but they <laughs> just handy, and um, and then orange and black, you know, flowered to fit in the. But it, it's coming up. And it's interesting when you ask the kids and don't let them come up with their own ideas. I find that, that, that that's often what I really had to learn like when I was teaching in the play and exploration program that it was, it's almost like co-education with the kids. You're, you're piquing their interests, you're, what they're showing interest in, and that guides what your, your learning is. And, and letting them start engaging and exploring and playing. And so like when I ask them for what type of garden, I don't want to say, you know, um, you know, a food garden or whatever, like whatever idea comes to their head another a little, another little boy he said he wanted a, a indoor tree garden okay and I thought for a while and and I've grown lots of trees from seeds actually I did I <laughs> I used to have a, a nursery growing coniferous seedlings for reforestation so I knew all about growing trees but it's that idea of of like the bonsai there you go, you know, <laughs> but it, it's his idea. And, and that's, so when it's their idea and then let them have a garden of their own. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's them that's that um, is doing all the planning, uh, planting, and you know, coming up with what kind of plants they want in there that that they're going to be willing to put the effort in to grow. You know, it does take effort, and the and it's them bringing in the harvest so that they become contributing members to the family food supply. And that does wonders to their feeling like valued, their contributing members, their confidence that they can produce food. And, uh, you know, all that, it's a garden of their own. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. When you were describing that, I was coming up with things to add to the garden. Like, so for the Halloween garden, there would be also different kinds of pumpkins, different kinds of gourds, but then maybe some cattails as well. So it's not necessarily like you're going to eat it, but they're like the spooky things and all of the, in the like show. So you can add some plants that aren't necessarily food. And for the indoor tree garden, it's like they have miniaturized fruit plants as well. And mm -hmm. so you know, you can get like a mini avocado tree or a mini apple, apple tree. tree. Yeah. Lemon so, tree. Yeah. Yeah. So you <laughs> yeah. could you could actually get some food along with like the bonsai. So yeah, that that just you know sparked my imagination as you were talking about that. So just imagine what that can do for little kids as well. Exactly. Yeah, and they're you know, get their imagination sparked. And as I say, like when it, it's it's a garden of their own, then they're learning responsibility too. You know, they learn that gardening, it is a commitment and you're going to have living things relying on you. And they like, I kind of used to joke around, like they always say, you know, maybe have a, an a animal pet before you have kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this is kind of one step, you know, first try growing some plants that, you know, having living things depend on you before you have that final commitment of uh, even getting a pet or having kids. So. Yeah, that wouldn't have worked so well for her. She doesn't tend to keep plants alive very well, but she does great with children. So I, I'm more of the I'm more of the green thumb in this yeah. family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my poor house plants wouldn't make it if he wasn't around. <laughs> but yeah, it's exactly what you were saying though, building that responsibility. So as the children are learning and planting the seeds, you get to talk to them about, oh, well, what does this plant need? It's going to need the yes. water. How often is it going to need the water? Let's make a schedule to make sure that it gets the water, that kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If it's outside and it's cold, oh, well, it might need a cover or a blanket on that really cold night so it doesn't freeze because we started it too early. And those kinds of discussions is so super important because then they are getting those life experiences. And if one happens to wilt over and not make it, then you can have that discussion about, uh-oh, what did we miss? What step did we miss so that it, when we plant it next time, we can do better? Or to handle disappointments. Because there is, you know, your dog might come in and dig up all your plants or, or uh, you know, a, an early frost wipe stuff out. You know, there's learning how to deal with that disappointment and, and uh, problem solving. Like if you do find something going wrong in the garden, like I like the kids, I say like, let's just step back for a bit and look at this from all different angles. We're gonna look at it all different ways. And if you can get that clarity on what the actual problem is and it can lead to solution, but and then let the kids come up with a solution on their own, doing the research. And, and uh, you know, it's very empowering to the kids. Like, I can handle this. I can handle this problem coming up. And, uh, and as you said, like, you know, if something goes wrong, learn from your mistakes and, and think, okay, so what, what did I do really good? You know, what things grew really well and what things maybe do I want to change? And, and uh, so with that, like I, <clears throat> I have them take lots of pictures oh, in the yeah. garden. So then they can see the growth. Mm -hmm. They can see what success they're having and, and, 
it gives a, you can actually make a photo journal and uh, then you've got something to look back on. And, and with the journaling too, like keeping a garden journal and that kind of builds in a little bit of the uh, literacy for the kids, mm -hmm. the writing and literacy. And, and uh, that, was, that was something I found, you know, if you can have on like a, that hands-on practical uh, learning experience like gardening or cooking, there's often a lot of the academic lessons right, right in there. Like with gardening, there's lots of math as you're planning out the patterning of and spacing of your garden, you know, literacy, like you're reading the seed packs. It's got a, lots of information on there. And, you know, the kids are, they're engaged with the gardening. They're, they're, they've got a vision for what they want, they, how they want their garden to be and, and something to work towards, all those delicious foods. And, and so it's like a motivation to, you know, do the reading and, and uh, write in their journal what's been happening. And, and, uh, and when, like even recording for the harvest, how much harvest weighing it and, and uh, or recording the amount so you can see the improvements and, and what it's all supplying. So like that and literacy minds and science, of course it's loaded with science. And Tons of science, exactly. Yeah. yeah. In a way, to, to me, you're like describing the farmer's almanac right there because <laughs> Year after year, farmers would, would plant this at this week, and then they would plant it the next week, and then they would plant it the next week. And not all plants are planted at the same time of the year. Some of the plants in your same garden, you have to wait two or three weeks to plant the next kind of plant. And what happens if you plant them all at the same time and which ones come up? And so all of that can be turned into life lessons for the children. And, you know, then there's like the, the whole life kind of things, like if you plant a uh, an asparagus seed you're not going to get walnuts you know so it's like you the, the kind of seed that you plant is the kind of plant that you get and then you can turn that back into like personal life lessons like i'm the herb seed and christina is the christina seed and i don't get to be john over there because i'm growing as as my own being and these seeds are yeah so there's there's all sorts of lessons that that just kind of just started all running through my head when you described that <laughs> And, and the life cycle of the plant, you know, getting to know your plants, like if the kids are really involved with their garden and the plants that they want to grow and get to know your plants. And, and the cool thing about like an annual plant, which has a lifespan of the one year, they can see the whole life cycle there, you know, from the seed you know, sprouting, putting out its leaves, become the vegetative stage, and then it starts to go to the flowering stage, and and then it starts to form its seeds and wither and die and go back to the earth. And that whole cycle. And it, with the garden, like the kids are really feeling a part of that cycle and that whole, you know, nature's patterns and cycles and and uh um i always like you know for the kids i say we're going to team up with mother nature and all their superheroes like the sun seed soil and and like nature it it really wants your garden to su survive and thrive and it, that's what nature's all about you know and and uh like the seed they're built to grow <laughs> they've got everything they need in there if you give them the right conditions the right care and like you know you know mother nature's schedule if you kind of follow for the climate you're talking about the different plants you, you plant at different times so if you can tune into your specific climate and there was a there was a website world weather online dot online i believe it was but then you can get the actual specific weather um like temperatures and rains for the yearly averages of month to month 
And then, you know, you know, which plants that you would grow in the cool weather, which plants you would grow in the hot weather and, and uh, following mother nature's schedule. And, and really to me, it, when I garden, it's a big thing of tuning into nature. And because there's certain windows that open up for there's times, times of the season, times for seeding, time for harvesting, you know, time to put things to bed for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's one thing that, you know, the herb always does with our garden is he actually has a, like a closed down process. What do you do at the end of the season? You cut down the extra stalks and let them kind of descend, you know, deteriorate over the winter and go back into the soil and things like that. So all of that continued cycle you get to teach after the plants are done growing, right? Yeah. 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 And it teaches you abundance too, because one seed can give you a plant that has thousands of seeds. And, you know, just, just to understand that, you know, there it's a bountiful resource that just keeps giving and, and expanding. And if you just take care of it, then you have food for long you time. Never have to go, you never have to go hungry if you know how to garden and grow your own food. But I love that, that abundance. And, and that's, I found like, if you're gardening, you've got that abundance and then you can share with others so it gives that you especially know especially if you plant zucchini <laughs> <laughs> you can share a lot if you plant more zucchini more <laughs> exactly and that's where my brain went you said about sharing and i thought well now we're taking our family and what we've learned and we've grown and now we're hopefully reaching out to the community because we're sharing those things. Maybe it's yes. with a church organization. Maybe it's with a food bank. Maybe it's with wherever that they accept those extras that you have that you can now give back to the community and help somebody else. So it just is a huge like circle. And now you have your family. Now you have your community. And maybe even reaching farther if the kids want to learn and grow more. And and with that, like, um, as you're saying that, like you've got your family, your community, yeah. And I, I like to put in here like that love of nature. Mm -hmm. If you can instill that love of nature at a young age, it makes such a difference for how the kids are handling, like they get bombarded with like this climate crisis and climate, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, environmental crisis. And, and, you know, they might think, well, we can hold up a placard or something. But if you've, if you've got that love of nature, you can let that love you feel direct your actions exactly and it it and the conversations you can have while you're gardening you're tending your little piece of earth and it can lead to those broader conversations about you know our the earth we live on and and uh how to keep the whole society and uh, going yeah. Oh, environment. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, some of our families ask about, you know, the whole communication piece. They're like, well, how do we get somebody, you know, how, how do we get our teenager talking to us if we haven't built the communication skills early? Well, like you said, if you're sit standing there gardening together or you're planting together, you know, the, that's the opportunity to have those conversations. You're not staring them in the eyes, telling them they've done something wrong. Instead, you're working side by side, like doing the dishes or cleaning the house or gardening together. So they have that more open communication expression available to them. Yeah, yeah. And that, and I don't know, I, I think gardeners just love talking about gardening too and showing off their plants and <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here. Yep. Herb loves talking about his plants in his garden. So one, one of the things that's actually kind of hard for me is when it comes time to like take out plants that need to go. So it's like you plant a whole bunch and you, you have yeah. too many. And so yeah. it's like, you have to like choose which plants to pull out. And that, that like is weird for me because like, man, I don't want to kill these plants. So normally what I would do is I would take them out of my garden and try and plant them other places where they could keep growing. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And yeah. then I end up with way too much stuff. But but yeah, sometimes those those having to get rid of things to prevent overgrowth. Um, yeah. And well, that too, you know, when you're when you're working with your plants and you're looking and the ones seeing that aren't 
doing so well, like that maybe it's time for them to let them go, you know, because as I say, they'll just be crowding out the other ones, you know, that are thriving and are going to give you the, the produce and everything. And my biggest thing is when I would start my seedlings and, you know, I was, I had had, they might be older seeds and I wasn't sure of their germination. And so I put in a whole, you know, I'd seed a whole pile of seeds and then it all come up. So I'm spreading them around the neighborhood, you know, <laughs> again, your abundance there. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. And that brings me to carrots because that's one thing that I am actually successful at. I can grow carrots, but again, those little itty bitty seeds, you get too many of them. And then there's too many carrots in one space. Well, if you want a big juicy carrot, you can't have too many growing in the same spot. So you do have to do that pruning. You do have to spread them out and make sure that they're, they have the room to grow. They have what they need. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's really that comes to like the caring and, and the nurturing mm -hmm. values it brings out in the kids, you know, that they are the caring. More life, yeah, more life lessons. How are you empathetic? How are you caring? How are you making things better for the things that you want to grow and survive and be, pros you know, fruitful? And, you know, one of my favorite things is, is actually going out into the garden and eating right from the plants. So when it comes time, and it's it's amazing because sometimes the fruiting can go on for weeks. And so it's like like with cucumbers, you get cucumbers for several, several weeks. And so it's like I, I like to go out and with a knife and just chop one right out there in the summer and eat it when it's warm, because not very many people get to do that. You know, I used to tease her a lot about how she would always put her fruits and vegetables in the refrigerator. Yeah. And I would tease her, like, man, if God had meant that food to be eaten cold, he would have made it grow in the wintertime instead of the summertime. Um, so being able to eat, just cut it off the plant and eat it right then, the taste is different, the texture is different. There's just, there's so much more to it. And the, and the kids, when they when they notice that, it's like, wow, what's what's going on? What's the Why difference here? Why does it here? taste the same as the store? They one? don't want to go back to the store-bought food. If they've tasted the fresh garden food they don't want to go back and and i i love the idea where the kids i used to you know get them grazing like go out in the garden and and you know pick some carrots or or peas or or you want some dessert go to the raspberry patch you know and and uh and they the kids start to learn you know where their food comes from it's, it doesn't just come from the grocery store and also what it goes, what goes into producing that food, it can make them a little bit, bit more grateful and appreciative. Yeah. Right. They start appreciating food. farmers because it's it's not just it's not just at the store. There's people that spend months doing this to get those into the store. Yeah. Yeah. And they, okay. you know, they start to appreciate that a little more. <laughs> okay, so safety wise, master gardener and guy who likes to go pick things raw out of the garden, is that really safe? You know, we have some parents who are like so worried about dirt and bugs and things like that. Adds to the flavor. Is it good? Is it okay? Well, actually, the, the studies too are that when you're exposed to like the dirts, that it actually builds up your immune system. The, there's certain healthy bacterias in the dirts too that we don't get anymore because yeah. things are too sanitized. And, um, you know, I have no qualms about taking a carrot and wiping it off on my pants and munching away, you know, and, and the, um, uh, you know, the cucumbers in that, I mean, they're not in the dirt. They're just fresh right there in the, and, and with safety in mind, you know, I, I talked about install, instilling that love of nature in the kids. And mm -hmm. often the kids aren't given that opportunity very often to just free play and, and go out and explore. And like often, you know, the parents are, are concerned, like they don't want to go let them, you know, Roman in the woods or whatever, but the garden, it's a nice safe spot in the backyard or on your balcony where the kids can, 
you know, enjoy exploring yeah. and, and uh, connecting with nature and, and yeah, get, a little get, get dirty, you know, so, so many, so often now they don't want their kids to get dirty yet. You know, and it's kind of funny. We, we, I grew up out in the woods. She grew up on a farm, right. but, but then we, I became a business person and she became a teacher and we lived in a city. Mm -hmm. And I remember our kids were seven or eight and we went back somewhere and it was like, oh, go climb the tree. And they didn't know how to climb a tree. It's like, go get dirty. And they didn't want to get mm -hmm. dirty. So yeah, we have to teach our kids how to get in the dirt and get dirty and climb trees and be out in nature because and, 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 and we a... didn't realize they were missing that right at first until we'd gone back to my parents house once or twice and it was like wow my kids don't know how to be outside like that anymore well it was uh, we were, we had taken tip took some grade six students out into the forest we we're going to go for a walk and then we we're gonna be met halfway and go for a, a wagon ride and the kids all they wanted to do was get, when can we go home they just wanted to get back and get back on their devices and I mm -hmm. thought this is so sad because I loved when my dad used to take me on field trips and we, I got to explore in the woods and and uh like they they just like their minds were totally, they just wanted to be on their phones and devices mm -hmm. until I found like there were some wild edibles. Mm -hmm. And when I pointed that out to them and I said, like, here's, this is uh, the wild mint mm -hmm. and the sarsaparilla plant. You can eat the roots, the little violas. And something about like kids and food, you know, growing kids. And even, you know, if a kid gets hungry, they're gonna drop their device and go get some food. So there you go. Get them uh, interested in gardening and uh, growing that food and it'll get them out of cyberspace and back into the natural world a bit more. <laughs> I love that. So let's talk about that a little bit more though, because like we just said, you know, we moved into the city, so we didn't have a big space to garden, right? And so some of our families might be saying, well, I can't garden because I don't have any space. What's the smallest garden you tended and, and helped somebody grow? And then what's kind of like a larger garden that somebody can tend and grow? Well, you can, you can have your instant garden with your sprouts on okay. your counter and you don't even need lights you can you know <laughs> but also like um if people are concerned about time and uh not space like even having some fresh herbs growing on the windowsill mm -hmm. and um put some of those in your dishes and start there yeah. and then you'll you know the kids will say like what did you do to that dish that's delicious you know and <laughs> Once you get your family behind you too, and then it, it's, um, you can expand from there. And that's too, when I'm working with the kids, I always uh, encourage, like start small, you know, so you don't get overwhelmed. And like, it's something you listen, you look at those seed catalogs and it, <laughs> it's so tempting. <laughs> that That's the thing, like, first of all, before you go to the seed catalogs, decide, what it is that you would like to grow in your garden. And if it is food, what it is that you would actually eat, like how much would you actually eat? Right. Or if you want some extra to put away and, and uh, but the, you know, just start off small. It might be just a little container I call like a salad bowl uh -huh. where you can all your salad pickings in one little container and, uh, easy to take care of and then again you can expand from there and 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 there's all these like um grow towers if you don't even have a balcony to grow on okay you know the grow towers it fits in the corner and and if you can't afford them there's a diy methods of you know producing them and uh but yeah. it's and if you really get, start to get into it and you do live in a city, there are lots of community gardens that are sprouting up now, mm -hmm. sprouting up. Yeah. So you can like search online to see if there's any community gardens around you. And that actually gives you a, a place to get out and to do more of the community service yeah. with, yeah. you know, because we're, we're really about homeschooling and having children at home. 
So again, if you don't have the space at home and you need something to do with your kids, the, those community gardens right now are, are a wonderful asset yeah. as well. Or see if there's some seniors in your area that you know have a garden plot, but they can't garden anymore. So you work their garden for them and share the produce. And that's a like a lovely connection there with the intergenerational and and uh, oh that's a wonderful idea because now we're sharing history and stories because you have that like you said the intergenerational the older and the younger and then the knowledge being passed down and the older is feeling useful again because they're able to give that knowledge and give guidance and the younger is feeling useful because they're helping the olders get it done so right there that's a full community i love it right there and I used to, I used to, all the old timers, I would always asking questions and how did you get to do that? And how do you, you know, I, yeah. I love going in the garden. I call them the old timers, but the, <laughs> exactly. well, I'm an old timer now, so. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're all getting up there a little bit, huh? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this conversation is so important because we do want our children to have these experiences. You know, we talk a lot about in vibrant family education that if a child grows up without a lot of experiences, they won't know what they want to do or how they want to be in the world. So they need these experiences. And then we have kids who like end up going off to college and not knowing what they want. So they end up kind of wasting money until they figure out what they want to study. But if they've had these previous experiences, then they can narrow in a little bit more about who they want to be and what they want to do. And then yeah. All of these things can be grown proportionally, I guess I would always say. Yeah, we might have some amazing gardeners growing up in the city who just need to be introduced to it to be able to run off and, and, and really and, fill in that part of their life. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's too, like having a more well-rounded education on all different things and the, the practical hands-on. And um, I'm going to bring it back to putting in like the academic expectations too yeah that that'll they'll just enhance your gardening and you know learning experience and and uh there's so much you like we we just built a a program i've got my got dirt gardening for kids program which gives the step by step and takes the kids on a, a gardening adventure but we've uh, made an extension so that we've got the um, academic lessons like the, the math, science, literacy. We've got some emotional, social learning. We've got even some financial literacy in there. And, and, uh, and it's all when you're getting the kids, they're engaged in the gardening. And the parents, you just kind of highlight these lessons and maybe, you know, make a little added extra curriculum and, and um, yeah, yeah, so then, and it's great for, you know, if, like if you're homeschooling, but if your parents will often um, want something for their kids to do if they are in the regular school system. Yeah. And so this gives them a, a something they can be doing in the summer and they're not losing their um academic falling behind yeah them. yeah yeah. Exactly. yeah we talk about that about how you know when you, you get the children interested in what they're doing you're not pushing the learning anymore they're pulling the learning they want to do it because they're so excited about it and it's not a chore anymore like you were saying so absolutely yeah. So use the gardening program to augment your public education or use your home, your know, homeschooling, gardening to do your education. There's so many different sources. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and like gardening or, or cooking, there's so many, you know, academic skills like the math and cooking, holy man, and experiment. Chemistry and cooking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeast. Yeah. Yeast rising. Yeah. And... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So Patrice, tell um, our audience where they can get a hold of you to find out more about this gardening program and gardening for the kids. Well, I, I just first wanted to offer, I, I do have a gardening with kids playbook, which will give the, it's a great place to start. It gives a step-by-step -step for gardening with your kids all the way from the planning 
to bringing in the harvest. And there's even some garden recipes in there for them. So that's, uh, I gave you the link there, or, or they can find me at thegardeninggrandma.com. And uh, you can even pick up the playbook there. Uh, you can book a chat there. You can see the different gardening programs we've got. There's the Got Dirt Gardening for Kids program and the Roots to Learning academic uh, lessons within gardening. And um, yeah, or book a chat. You can book a chat. And talk <laughs> exactly. Yes. And all of those links and everything will absolutely be in the show notes. So if you're listening and you can't click on it right now, you know, make sure you go to the show notes. Everything will be there. Patrice's information will be there. She just read off her website for you. So make sure you make these connections. Let's make sure that we're, our kids are growing and getting attached to nature, understanding nature, and using all of these experiences to learn and grow. So what, what do you want to leave our parents with? Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you really wanted to talk about today? Well, I, I hope it opens some new doors to them and and uh, new ways to look at learning and and um, uh, gardening and and you know I, I like them to be lifelong long garden um, gardeners and lifelong learners. So it's giving them some success in the garden at the early successes there and motivate them with the fresh foods and <laughs> lifelong it's not learning. always just foods lifelong either so garden. for like if you're a house owner it, it could be like how the flowers and the shrubs and the way your guard your grass is that's all involved in it as well so what's growing around your house not just not just about food but yeah yeah well you can have edible landscaping too that's true <laughs> oh cool i'll have to get on that one now another topic yeah another show that is awesome well thank you so very much for joining us today it has been a delight talking with you and hopefully our families have picked up lots of little nuggets along the journey as we talked about plants and food and growing garden and getting in dirt and getting in nature and making sure that you're learning more to support your child support your family and then of course supporting our communities as we share all of these wonderful things so thank you for joining us today. Make sure you follow Patrice at thegardeninggrandma.com and make sure you follow us Vibrant Family Education for more learning opportunities. Until next time, bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Loved it. <laughs>